Hi everyone, I'm Emily Marsh from the Greater Concord Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today. Um, this is a really interesting topic and I'm so glad um, that Chuck and John could join us today from uh, Chuck Sync Link and Recharged Solutions. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, if you have additional questions after today's presentation, you can go to the Chamber's website, which is conquerednhchamber.com. From our homepage, you can quickly uh, click on a COVID page that has a list of tons of resources for you to take a look at right now. Um, it also has links to past recorded webinars um, that you can watch. We will also be recording today's events, so that will be available on our website afterwards. Um, a little bit more info uh, today. If you have a question, you're going to submit that through the Q&A portal. So to get to that, you're going to um, either tap your screen if you're on a smartphone or just wiggle your mouse a little bit and you'll see a Q&A button. If you hit that, uh, you can simply type in a question and it will be seen by uh, me and our, our presenters today. Um, it will not be seen by attendees, so your question is anonymous in that regard. Um, so please feel free to, at any time during the presentation, type in a question for our presenters. We'll also leave a little bit of time at the end to answer those. Um, so with, without further ado, I want to introduce Chuck Sink and John Parker, who will be kicking off today's presentation. Thank you, everyone. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chuck Sink, and my company is Chuck Sink Link, and we're a small marketing agency located here in the Concord area. Uh, we do business with all kinds of companies, uh, from financial services through retail, construction, and manufacturing. Um, and my specialty is content writing, content development, creative strategy, and overall marketing strategy. So I'm really delighted to be here today to talk specifically about e-commerce. And I'm going to cover some of the higher level points, um, kind of begin to get you to ask some very important questions about your goals and, you know, really what you want to achieve with e-commerce and you know really what it's all about and what makes it different from other kinds of uh, websites or other kinds of online marketing. Um, so let me uh, advance through here and talk about a couple of fundamentals right up front. This definition of e-commerce is the best I've seen. It's the most succinct and the most accurate, frankly. E-commerce are commercial transactions conducted electronically on the internet, period, that's it. Um, what makes that special is that they're conducted electronically uh, on the internet and you may never need to communicate with another person uh, with words. Um, you'll get a package delivered and everything will be done uh, completely online and the company will be paid and everybody's really happy. So that's basic e-commerce. Um, why would you want to go e-commerce these days? Um, you know, should you, or, or why, why should you consider it? And the, the big answer is really everyone is online today, especially now with this pandemic, forcing people to work from home and uh, spend a tremendous amount of time on their computers. So that's where, you're gonna reach them. They're, they're online just as we are right now, okay? So that's important. All right, so a few fundamentals to cover. Um, you may ask is, will it work for my business? I've been pretty successful so far without it. Uh, is it something I should consider uh, to supplement what I'm doing now? Um, do I need it at all? Not every business needs to be doing e-commerce, but more and more do every day in order to compete. Um, personally, I don't have an e-commerce website. Mine is a lead generation website, and we're gonna get into some distinctions, uh, important distinctions there in a minute. Uh, another fundamental question is affordability. Can you afford an, uh, an e-commerce initiative uh, over and above your, your, mark, your current marketing budget? Um, and 
the, I can't answer that. Um, well, I can, <laughs> let me go back. Um, chances are you can if you keep it simple. Um, simplicity is a theme that we're gonna kind of repeat a couple of times or three or four times today, uh, but for good reason. Um, simplicity reduces cost and um, it gives you an opportunity to get something started quickly and then get some experience and some traction. And so I want to move into um, goals. What are, what are your goals? Once you decide, okay, I think it's, it's time for us to get into e-commerce. Uh, what, what are we going to achieve with this? What do we need uh, this to do for our business? Do we simply want a new revenue stream? Are we looking to grow? Uh, do we want to reach new customer segments that are online versus, you know, more traditional transactions? Um, do we want to completely transform our business to look like something else with e-commerce? You know, is it going to change who we are in a couple of years from now? Are we going to look totally different if we if we do a massive shift? So. Um, these are questions for you to, to ask yourself and answer uh, yourself, but we can guide you into coming to the right answers today for sure. Um, lead generation, just want to cover this briefly. Um, there is a distinct, uh, uh, important distinction. Um, it's, it's chances are you're going to want both uh, initiatives going for your uh, offerings. If you have a great e-commerce uh, platform, all embedded and it's um, integrated, working fine on your website, um, will you have customers? You need to generate traffic to that page. And some of those customers, may, you may need to have an offline conversation with. Uh, so it, for most of us, e-commerce is going to be part, maybe a big part, but it won't be 100% of our business. So think about lead generation and online marketing uh, as you're doing this. And I wanna shift over to um, measuring success and kind of like talk about the, uh, look, looking at the numbers and the analytics and determining your return on investment. Um, the really good news about e-commerce is that everything is measurable and it's easy to measure. And um, you, can, you can really measure your return on investment literally down to the penny, exact penny. And if you think about it, um, your costs are pretty easy to calculate going into it. You know the services that you're paying for and the maintenance costs and so forth. Um, and, and you just extrapolate from there based on your revenues and uh, make those ROI calculations. The data is gonna be all there at your fingertips 24 seven, and it's gonna be very easy to understand with your dashboard. Okay, now the offering is so, so critically important to think through, and I talked about simplicity. Um, let me reiterate that if you make your initial offering very simple, easy to understand and easy to, uh, to, to get, make the transaction very easy to complete, then you'll get easier uh, engagement, okay? So um, even if you have less traffic, you may still get orders because it's just, it's a lead pipe cinch for someone to order something they need. They, they, why not do it now? I'm online, it's easy. Um, so if you have a, a, a product offering or a multiple product offering with many categories, we suggest that when you start out, only offer, limit the scope, offer your highest priority, highest uh, profitability or highest volume, your best sellers, um, because chances are that's where you're going to get your success early and get some uh some revenue traction, get some data going for you, and then build out from there. We keep in mind this revenue, this new source of revenue is gonna allow you to further invest into building out a, a larger e-commerce offering, giving your customers more options and ultimately selling more online. But again, keep it simple in the beginning and you'll keep your costs way down 
and it'll be easier on yourself, your whole team, and your fulfillment and, and, and all that, okay? And then lastly, I, I love talking about visuals and design and the message. And, and that's, that's where I play the most is in creative services. Um, I'm a brand strategist and I implore all of my, my clients to represent their brands the way they should be, uh, which is in the best light. Okay, so make sure if you don't have um, really good product photography, uh, a good variety, good lighting, good angles and so forth, or, or, or video that, you know, how to videos, things like that. These are assets that you really need to invest in um, to be successful. And these are assets because you'll use them over and over in other kinds of marketing. You'll find, you'll find them so valuable and you probably already know this. Um, so you're, you're building your e-commerce store. Let's say you've made the decision. Um, you're going to start out and you're going to start offering some, a, a few products that are best sellers and so forth. You're starting out simply. Okay. And you've always got that opportunity to build, build, build. Nothing is static here. This is a very dynamic, uh, environment. Uh, so keep it simple. Again, that photography and, and video content is going to help you sell. It really is. It's going to help you close the deal without deal having to, to talk to anyone. Um, keep it easy for the consumer. Think about how easy you would want it to be on you and try to design that level of ease and simplicity into it. Um, I, always, I always use myself an ex, as ex, an example, as a consumer example, and it tends to work out pretty well. Um, and this last, or second to last point, or the last point is the logistics. Let's plan for success. Let's say you have a great marketing campaign planned and upfront, and you, know, you do some pre-launch uh, campaigning, uh, enticing people and you know it's it's launch day you launch your website um, and lo and behold bing bing orders start coming in left and right well make sure you have the logistics have the fulfillment capability to make your customers happy so that you don't start getting a bunch of online complaints and you know that it doesn't blow up in your face somehow now i want to move quickly into some examples here and um, this one, maskforcitizens.com, didn't exist a couple of, two or three weeks ago. Um, this website was literally launched from the first discussion to a live functioning e-commerce e website in exactly one week, okay? Um, it might have even been just under a week, but it, it was within that one week turnaround time that we had to have this thing live. And um, what was good about it is we did some uh, pre-planning uh, in public relations and marketing campaigning ahead of time so that when the site was launched, um, within 48 hours, we had 50, over $50,000 in orders. And these are masks that are seven bucks a piece. Um, minimum of two two masks per order, but people were ordering volumes of these masks online, having never even seen them before, um, except for a picture or so online. Um, so fifty thousand dollars, you know, first forty eight hours, and now it's maintaining a good volume uh, through an advertising campaign and social media and so forth. This website's very easy to use. Uh, you, it, it's got the call to action right here. If you click this, it brings you to the store. Um, and you can see it's very simple. You can choose the color option with a drop down. And what's really great, what really uh, is a great public relations aspect is that for every mask order made, they donate a mask to an organization of your choice. So if you click this drop down, you'll get a choice for healthcare facilities, elder care, homeless shelters, and EMTs, fire first responders, people like that who really need masks right now. 
So this is this this site is is just doing some great work out there in the community, and it has helped turn this netting business around. Um, unfortunately, he went into masks, or fortunately, I should say, because his netting business, his industrial netting business, went south because of COVID nineteen and the amusement parks being his primary industry. Uh, but they know stitching and tying techniques and making masks was easy for them to transition. Now they're successful and they have all their employees back to work. Okay, um, a local example. Why not a restaurant uh, experience, right? Siam orchids, some of you might be familiar. Great, great Thai food. I decided to uh, order Thai, in fact, my wife wanted um, Thai food for Mother's Day. So this past Mother's Day evening, we decided we'd go to our favorite Thai restaurant and order online. And that's pretty much your only option these days. They really, they don't even want you to use the phone. They want you to go to the website. And when you call them, they say, oh, you go to the website and you can order right online. So <laughs> why not? Um, so you click this button and it brings you to their menu and you can scroll this entire menu, which is quite extensive. But let's just say, okay, I just want a quick appetizer. I'm gonna pick it up for lunch. I love chicken satay, let's order that. And when you click that, it'll bring you to the store and your first order is in the cart, chicken satay, or you add it to the cart. If you wanna add um, several orders, you just click this. If you want to go back to the menu and add more items, you just simply click this little menu icon up here. It brings you back to the menu. So you can order plenty more stuff and then add it to your cart. And then you can check out and it calculates your quantity. They even let you to give special instructions, which is really a nice, nice little component for e-commerce um, restaurant. So you click add to your cart and you can see you're ready to check out. You place your order and then they give you a follow-up email with a time to pick it up. And um, I can tell you this was a seamless, perfect transaction, but I will say something about the logistics. They may not have thought about Mother's Day volume and the time they gave me to pick up, they, they could have perhaps uh, they known what kind of volume they were getting. Um, you know, sent me a, or given me a phone call to uh, let me know it might be a little late. And it was a little late, but that's okay. We had a great meal. Um, all right, so that's, that's a nice simple example of restaurants we're all familiar with eating out, I would imagine. And um, now, um, Bow Auto Parts is an interesting example I wanted to show before I turn it over to my colleague. And by the way, before I do that, I just want to mention that uh, please stay to the end of this because we're going to give you a free gift, a downloadable free gift that's going to make your e-commerce uh, venture much better, much smoother, um, more directed, and more successful. So stick around for that. I think you're going to be find that a very valuable gift. All right, so getting into this uh, this screen here showing um, our client Bo Auto Parts. You know, John and I have been working together about three years on multiple websites. And um, this is one that we enjoy uh, together quite a bit. And it's local and we're both into automo automotive. Um, you know, John loves trucks. I love uh, sedans and cars and hot rods, but um, Bo Auto Parts is a great client. They have primarily a lead generation website, but they also have e-commerce as a component. Um, they sell a, a, a lot of large car parts, like whole engines and transmissions, and you know, full body, you know, automobile and truck body parts, which are fairly big ticket items. And they prefer to sell by telephone because they find that they can really help their customers get exactly what they need and be very valuable service-wise. And so they encourage phone calls. So you have this nice, beautiful, bright call to action button here that um, allows you to make a call, or you can certainly search their entire inventory online. And if you so choose, you can order online 
in a complete uh, e-commerce um, fashion. So you can see this store is actually an eBay store. Bo Auto Parts has chosen eBay as a platform for, uh, I guess, expediency and the fact that it, it works very well for them. Um, and it, it's, it, it's, it's not reinventing the wheel. Um, so they don't have a big e-commerce need, but they want it available for customers, especially for, for smaller parts that people can find the make model year. So they look for their, their part type and they can just order it very easily. And they have a, a little help section here if they need further help. But this store allows the customers who prefer it to shop completely online, pure e-commerce, all electronic, all internet, um, and they just ship out the part. So that's kind of a hybrid example of, of a, a lead generation and e-commerce website combination. And uh, I wanna turn the floor over to my colleague, John Parker, whom uh, I've, like I said, worked on, worked with now for about seven plus years. We've worked on um, furniture retail sites. We've worked on automobile. Uh, we've worked on manufacturing, um, you name it. Um, our experience together has been uh, really great and I've learned a lot from this guy. And um, I'd like to say the feeling's mutual um, and uh, we're still working together. So that's a good thing. And we, we continue to be partners. Um, so Mr. Parker, I would like to turn the floor over to you, sir. Awesome. Let me get this shared here. Uh, let me share my screen. Hopefully everybody can hear and see me and see my screen. Um, Chuck, I appreciate you kind of going over that top level uh, element. I'm actually here at the lake right now, up on Lake Winnipesaukee. I would have my hair all nicely done, but right now I'm rocking out a legal mullet and it's not a good sight for anybody. I think it's been about 70 days since I've had a haircut. So we're gonna stick with what we have right here. Um, let's dive right in. You know, my goal for this part of this presentation is to really bring you through and kind of build upon what Chuck just gave you uh, for initial direction. And I'm actually going to go through an entire method of what you can do to start building out your e-commerce site today. So if that's the route that you want to go where you're more of a do-it-yourselfer, you want to kind of focus on investing your time versus money to start, I'm going to give you the exact way that you can go from zero to hero uh, step by step you know, throughout this presentation. So uh, let me get this. So, um, so this is a picture of me over to the right. Uh, no, nope, I'm just kidding. But uh, so basically what we do and what Chuck had talked about is we always kind of figure out whether or not e-commerce should be a 100%, you know, let's go full blown e-commerce, of course, with the mass for citizen site. Can you imagine if we got, if we did not have e-commerce and all of a sudden we had to per, we had to process a thousand plus orders in a 48 hour time span, right? And so if that was the case, we would have gotten so overwhelmed instead of having this full blown e-commerce machine, which we're leveraging technology to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Now, like Chuck had also said, we take a lot of approaches where it is kind of a hybrid, where the, maybe the main goal is lead generation for the high ticket elements of the business, but then we also have this e-commerce supplement. And sometimes we just tell businesses that, you know, let's just go full e-commerce or fully generation mode and let's just not do the e-commerce right now. Um, so a couple things that are interesting with that is, I mean, if we think back to, you know, five to 10 years ago, if I told you that, hey, here's a link, you can buy a hundred thousand dollar car just right online here. Like there's very few people who would have been even okay with that type of idea. Yet we see companies like Tesla blowing up right now because they've changed the game. They've shown that, you know, this perception that we've had of a what can be sold online and what can't be sold online has drastically changed. Um, Chuck and I have worked on you know, many, many accounts and one of the accounts was a furniture company. And the furniture company was really hesitant about investing in e-commerce back about five years ago because they said, you know, people need to touch the furniture, they need to lay on the furniture. And so now we have, you know, people are pretty desensitized from the fact of you can buy furniture online now. And if you know that Lazy Boy or other brand names are, are something that you love, you've always had, you know, people go online and purchase these things that even five to 10 years ago, you would have never thought about purchasing online. And so 
one of the biggest things that we go through is we always talk about at first high value versus low value offerings. Now, why this is important is because the economy of scale and kind of the economics between you know, a high value offering versus a low value offering is a little bit different. And the biggest thing that we tell clients is that it's important to know your numbers. And so one of the resources we're gonna to give to you at the end is a very helpful way to go step by step of really understanding your numbers behind your business. Because Chuck and I, as much as we love working with our clients and doing this and all the stuff that we do for them, we're hired to increase their bottom line. We're not hired to increase some vanity metric. So everything we do needs to come from a place of how, how, where is the break even point? When does this become profitable for you? And so obviously with a higher value item, say you're selling something for $1,000 online, it's gonna take fewer sales for us to process in order to make up for your e-commerce investment. If you have a lower value item, it obviously takes more volume. And with more volume, we have to keep in mind that we sometimes have to implement additional automation or technologies to kind of help with that higher volume. Um, again, with the Mass for Citizen site, you know, if we had to manually process a thousand plus orders, that would have been a huge undertaking. Instead, we had a lot of automation set up, really automated the entire process down to uh, ship, uh, printing the shipping label. Um, so it really helped out a lot in their standpoint. Um, so the other thing that we think of is not only high, high value and low value, but a lot of offerings versus a couple offerings. And Chuck did a really good job at kind of going over this. So I'm just going to touch on it quickly. You know, we always say to prioritize your products based on demand, based on profitability, as well as based on cross-sell and upsell opportunities. Now, when you first build out an e-commerce site, you know, you're going to take kind of what we, what we recommend, more of a stage one, stage two, stage three approach. Um, this allows so that, you know, we don't get too stuck in making this huge investment from the start before, you know, pre-revenue and have all these things built out. And then, you know, we've, we've utilized all this budget to get to this point. We would rather start generating revenue as fast as possible. We like to get to market, knowing that we can always build upon that. And one of the layers that we build on is really advanced, um, very smart, personalized automation that can help with both cross-selling and upselling different products based on what people purchase. And so, you know, we always recommend people to apply the 80-20 rule. I'm a huge advocate of the 80-20 rule. Um, if you don't know what that is, you can kind of search it on Google. It's a very, very important rule. We use that on every decision-making um, element of my own business. We use that to kind of trim fat and to keep ourselves very focused on results. Um, that's actually really a part of our competitive advantage is that we do less things because we're so focused on what is that 20% that leads to the 80% results and we really hone in our time and focus on that top 20%. And so, you know, when you start thinking in terms of, you know, I want to have tons of offerings, I want to have everything online, you know, that increases your setup costs, it increases your maintenance costs, it increases your marketing costs. And again, you know, if I'm a restaurant, I don't need to be like, okay, I can only have, you know, 10 items on my, on my, you know, menu, I mean, you can build this out with all the menus that you want. And what's cool is that with e-commerce, if it's, if the platform is built correctly, we give clients access to their platform. We show them how to add and remove products, how to, how to manage their e-commerce. And that's a huge part because as a restaurant owner, we would rather be able to show you, enable you and empower you, you know, versus having you have to send every little change through us. And so one of the, one of the ways though, that the you know, many offerings can kind of backfire is if you're in a lot of different categories. So if you're, in a, if you're a company that offers, you know, 10 different categories of products and you offer a bunch of products in each one of these categories, that's when we really try to hone in on what are your most important goals to accomplish to, that you actually want to accomplish. And we kind of take a stage one, stage two, stage three approach, just again, to keep the cost low. And so, um, and so what we see here is I, uh, the product specifications and shipping. So right here, it's really important that the, uh, we ask these questions for each product. And again, kind of coming back to if we have 100 different products, the work that is required to ask these different questions are a bit more. Um, and so what we want to do is we ask you, we always ask for every single product, what are the dimensions of one unit? You know, what is the weight of one unit? What are the quantities, you know, what quantities will require what shipping solutions? And with the mass site, we know that when we hit 25 mass or 50 mass, that the packaging changes a little bit. These are all important elements to keep in mind. It's also important to keep in mind that 
we have to choose the best shipping option and best shipping solution. So it's important to kind of take a look at the pricing of UPS versus USPS versus FedEx, stamps.com. Um, you know, not only that, but who, who in your company is going to pack the items? Who's going to apply the shipping labels? You know, will there be pricing discounts at higher volumes? Will there be larger order value discounts? These are all important elements. And so, and feel free, like with these questions, uh, the resource at the end, it's gonna give you all of these questions plus a lot more. So it's gonna allow you to kind of go through this step-by-step. Step. So don't worry if you're you know, not writing all these down or don't frantically feel like you have to be taking notes. This is all included in the downloadable resource at the end. And so this is one of the things that I always talk with clients about is you know, we wanna let technology actually do the driving of your business. We're in the technology age of business. And so would you rather have your team be like actually be the system itself or would you rather have your team learn how to drive the technology systems that you can enable for your business? And so obviously we're in a completely different, I mean, the digital age is here. And with this COVID-19, you know, pandemic, you know, we moved into the digital age at rapid speeds. It felt like three years happened in three days. And so we want to kind of take this new approach and this new mindset of, if my goal right now is to dig a hole and I have eight employees and they have shovels and then I have, you know, what, what would I rather have? Would I rather have these eight employees using shovels and being the system to dig the hole? Or would I rather train one employee to use something like an excavator where you could very easily dig that hole? You could dig it better. You could dig it faster. And I'm not saying this example to be like, okay, you eight, only one of you can stay on my team. I'm saying this to enable your employees to actually become more valuable for your organization by giving them the ability to run some of this technology. There's no reason you can't have an inter internal employee of your team managing your e-commerce site for you. So, you know, we really want to make sure that we're letting the systems do the heavy lifting for you. And so I'm not going to dive too much into this. I could probably talk for three hours just on this one slide. Um, but it's important that we understand that technology is here and that there's really two options. It's that you're either going to stay with kind of what you're using currently, or you're going to make the conscious decision to say, okay, let me take a new look at what systems are currently in my business and which ones are using flip phone technology versus smartphone technology. Now, if I have, if my accounting system is a, you know, Google is a uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, and trust me, we've worked with clients that do a million dollars per month that run their business, you know, before they hired us off of an Excel sheet. And like, I want to high five these guys because I'm like, man, you are like working way too hard. But it's amazing that you guys are able to do this and you're running a super successful business like this. But let me show you how much easier this can be and how to really unlock like what we call uh, hidden data layers within your business that you can't unlock when you don't have the right technology involved. Because when you set up the right technology, you unlock these hidden data layers that you would have never been able to have before. And these data layers are really where we find the largest opportunities to, to actually capitalize on the market, as well as we find where the invisible anchors of your business are that are potentially holding back your success or making you work too hard to accomplish too little. I'm not saying that people are accomplishing too little, but you would accomplish so much more with that same amount of energy and time if your systems are using smartphone versus flip phone kind of technology. So it's important to kind of keep that, mind, that in mind when you're going through this. And ultimately, if you update your say accounting system or inventory management system, and you find different cloud-based solutions online that are like that next step from what you're currently doing, that's how we can then connect these other systems into your e-commerce system so that your e-commerce system's tracking and, and automatically sending all of your data into your accounting system. It's automatically updating your inventory management system. So we can build this automated digital profit machine, which really takes things, I mean, it really enables us to increase our business based on a pure data-driven approach, which is how we unlock exponential growth. And so this is a chart right here. Um, I'm somebody that always tells people to do their own research. I never like just saying, yep, blindly just follow what we're saying and what we're doing. Like you should always do your own research. And one of the biggest decisions you're gonna make with e-commerce is what platform should I use? I mean, you could type in right now on Google, e-commerce platforms. You're gonna get a list of 10, 15 different platforms you can use. Now the reason, you know, what this chart is showing right here is this is e-commerce usage, usage, the distribution in the top 1 million sites in the world. And you can see that there's WooCommerce and Shopify are the two that 
are really um, driving this. And so, you know, for us, we do everything on WooCommerce. We find it to be um, a little bit more of an initial setup, but Shopify is a lot more of like monthly costs that kind of keep adding up and adding up. Now, again, for some businesses, you're going to take a look at Shopify, you're going to take a look at WooCommerce, and, you know, some businesses would prefer Shopify. You know, some businesses prefer WooCommerce. We love WooCommerce, again, because it actually sits on the WordPress platform, and WordPress, when set up correctly, is a very easy to use platform. The problem is, is a lot of people have a negative misperception about WordPress because they were never, they've never experienced WordPress set up at a very high level where it actually is built for usability. I know with Chuck and I, our platform that we built on WordPress has over 35 different technologies all built in. We completely customize the entire backend for our clients and they love it more than, you know, we've had clients come from Shopify to our WooCommerce setup and they said it's so much easier. So it's all about kind of how you approach it, but you always should do your own research rather than, you know, kind of just going with what somebody says. We do use WooCommerce. They are the number one largest uh, e-commerce uh, platform. So this is going to be, this is like a lot of text on a slide. I know I'm like going against the golden rule of uh, PowerPoint here, but um, again, don't worry about this slide. All this is going to be included, plus even more in-depth steps in the downloadable resource at the end. Uh, right here, this is honestly like, this is me sitting here and saying, this is the fastest way to get a legitimate e-commerce site up and running. Right now, I'm talking like right after this presentation, you could start doing this and you could start building this out in a matter of hours. And so what do you do is you need to have a place where your website's going to live. And so that's going to be your domain. Your domain is kind of like your golden key, like your password to your domain. That is a golden key to your online presence. You can go to godaddy.com, namecheap.com, which we, we like a lot, and you can choose a domain. Now, if you already have a domain, have a website up, you can buy a other domain, a similar domain, just so you can start playing around in like that as a sandbox so you're not interfering with your existing site. So buy a domain, that's where it all lives. But, you know, now we need to actually set up some website hosting. And this is where really all that technology is going to, you know, be, be integrated into and kind of sit on top of. Now, we recommend Kinsta. Uh, we use that for many clients. It's a Google Cloud infrastructure. So no longer are we doing GoDaddy and other kind of cheap hosting um, stuff, which really doesn't run e-commerce that well. Um, we use Kinsta. And Kinsta is actually an amazing resource. And why I'm sharing it with you today is that they have an option for a one-click install for WordPress plus WooCommerce. So you can literally go to kinsta.com. You can sign up for like a $30 a month package. I have no affiliation with Kinsta other than I just love them. Um, and so you can go there, you can sign up, you can ask their support to quickly install it, or you can click the button and automatically you're going to have a WordPress plus WooCommerce set up. Now, the only thing that you're going to be lacking is like a design. And so you could go to themeforest.com. You could buy a highly rated premium design that, that's popular. I mean, don't pick something that has low reviews or only a couple people have bought it. Pick a very highly rated, you know, popular setup. It comes with tons of documentation that makes it almost as easy. If you can navigate Microsoft Word, you can essentially do this, right? I mean, you're not gonna be able to customize crazy stuff, but you're gonna be able to get that baseline for your business. And so, I, I mean, as, as, professional or as unprofessional as this may sound, use Google and YouTube searches. You can find so much on Google and YouTube. And I see this be, you know, something that business owners don't realize the power behind this. If right now with everything that I showed you, you basically are ready to go. I obviously can't show, show you every single step of the WooCommerce setup. So you could right now type into Google WooCommerce complete guide 2020. And you're going to probably see quite a few guides that can you know, picture by picture, click by click, bring you through that process. And so the final thing I want to give you for advice is the Stripe setup. And so the Stripe setup is very important. That's what we recommend as the payment gateway. Once you're inside and you've done the steps that I've shown, there's literally a big button that says use Stripe. You sign up for a Stripe account and you are ready to go. So this is all going to be covered in that resource. Now, what happens when we go live? This is something that we have to, uh, we have gotten, Chuck and I have gotten very good at being so uh, conscious about creating the right perception for clients and making sure that we have a promotional strategy in place so that when a client, uh, when a client actually, you know, goes to launch the website, we then are, you know, ready to also promote the website at the same time. Because if we launch an e-commerce site and it's a brand new site, and there's no promotional strategy in place, you know, we've had a couple clients get really concerned because they don't like immediately orders don't start coming in. They kind of have this misperception that, you know, people will just find their website. 
Now, if we're replacing your existing website and you already have traffic and you know, organic and stuff, then of course, all those people are going to come in. But for us, we like to have a promotional strategy that's ready to rock when we launch because that's going to be the key to actually getting those orders in. It doesn't matter how good the systems are if you're not getting those eyeballs on the system and getting that traffic you know, to your new site. So going live in zero traffic is what we call it. And so going live, feel free if you, if you did follow my steps, you can um, have the support. Your hosting company will help you go live. Uh, you can just reach out to their support, super easy. Um, comes with the Kinsta kind of package. And so finally, you know, once we're actually live, what we focus on is we focus on organic and paid promotion. Organic's amazing. It's kind of like uh, if you were to be on a sailboat and kind of letting the wind guide you. Paid efforts is kind of like you jumping into a uh, you know, race boat or a speed boat and you know, being able to give it that throttle. So typically, we will focus on and we'll try to budget from the very start before we even build an e-commerce site, we'll try to budget out some promotional paid efforts knowing that we can turn on the paid efforts as soon as we go live so we really get that same day throttle-like response. And we also, since we're, we're connecting this into a platform where we see all the data of, we're able to see this end-to-end -end data of really what's working all the way from stranger to paying customers. So there's no gray area in data be, you know, throughout that entire um, customer experience and buying process. And so measuring results, this is a major thing that I just touched on a little bit, is we always, you know, it's very easy to make things complex. And humans by nature make things super complex. So our goal is to keep things super simple. And so whether you're viewing this as a you know, building blocks uh, vertical or building blocks horizontal, the way that we do this is we set it up so that we say, okay, we got this many visitors to the site. And then from here, this is how many people clicked on and went to our place in order. There's so many people went to the order confirmation page. And so we're looking at it as a really simplified like building blocks sitting together. So if we have any issues in the system, we know that we can see exactly where that issue is and we know what building block people are dropping off and it's really not working that well. You know, we got a thousand people to click on the order page, but then only three orders came in. We obviously need to do something to optimize one of those building blocks in that section so we can increase our conversion rate. And, you know, WooCommerce does a great job as well as Google Analytics for us to kind of track this process. Um, again, we're looking at an end-to-end -end data set. There's no gray areas in it. We know everything down to the penny. And this is when you connect paid advertising into here, you get like a sales-like throttle, and you also enable the ability to hit, to actually implement very advanced automation and scalable solutions. Um, so the very final bit is, uh, will you be paying with time or money? And so we have clients, you know, that want to pay with their time and save money. And that's great. And I recommend that if you, you know, don't have the budget yet to go e-commerce, you kind of want to test it out. I recommend following my steps, just going that route. And then some clients just want to pay with money and save the time. And so that's okay too. We're here to help. Um, we have some clients that say they just want to go to market fast. They don't want to spend, you know, a week or two kind of playing around. Granted, you know, the, the process and system I just showed um, is going to take less than a week or two for you to play around with. But still, to really dial things in, they just want to go to market, right? They want that premium set up. They want to get going. Um, so at the end, I'm going to answer any questions in, in the next slide. But before I end, I just want to show that um, Chuck and I have actually created this really powerful resource uh, that we constantly add to. And what this is, this is the e-commerce strategic planning uh, cheat sheet. It really goes through all the questions that we went through here, all the different steps, uh, much more different questions and things that help you kind of dial into this. Um, you can go to this link right here, recharge-solutions.com slash chamber gift. Uh, you can immediately download it right there. And uh, I appreciate it, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Hey everyone, I'm back. First, I just want to acknowledge a technical glitch we had. Um, you may have seen Chamber President Tim Sink pop on for a couple seconds. I apologize. Um, as you probably know, the Chamber is a very busy place and Tim is out there advocating for business owners right now. And we have one Zoom account that we all have to share, so it can be really tough. Um, so that was, that was Tim, just hard at work. Uh, sorry for the interruption. <laughs> I, I, but. I thought I did something wrong at one point. I'm like, oh, oh no. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for just going, going with the flow on that. Uh, yeah. It was, you know, it was not a security breach. This, this was an internal, uh, you know, chamber, you know, our error. So um, you can submit questions um, about this presentation, again, through that Q&A portal. Uh, 
remember just tap your screen, move your mouse, and then you can type in your question from there. I have a couple questions to just kind of kick things off though. Um, so as people are considering, you know, setting up e-commerce for their businesses, um, you know, how do they compete with, you know, really large, you know, big name brands and businesses right now when they are, you know, a small, uh, a small business and really their advantage is that they're maybe right downtown in Concord or um, they know their clients personally or something. How, and suddenly they become just like everyone else when they set up e-commerce. How can they use their advantage to their benefit? I'd like John to answer that um, yep. somewhat, but I, you know, I would like to say that e-commerce is actually an opportunity to level the playing field, um, because as we were talking about earlier, uh, and John will, you know, follow up some additional points here. Um, you know, if you if you use photography that's as crisp and sharp and beautiful as you know a, a top brand like Nike or someone else, and that is entirely achievable with local talent, uh, then you're going to be competing uh, head to head with them in terms of look, feel, quality, and value. Okay, so the, you know, then the scalability of e-commerce um, and some of the things John was talking about earlier can, can certainly help a small company start really nipping at the heels uh, of a large brand manufacturer. Um, but John, do you want to pick up on that? That question? Yeah. Yeah. So, so your question was about like uh, localizing uh, and being able to compete with the big guys. So what we do is when we actually launch e-commerce site and we're going through the e-com planning stage, we're thinking about, okay, who is it that we really want to hone in on? And if it's going to be, you know, I'm a Concord restaurant, I'm looking at maybe a, you know, 10 to 15 mile radius, you know, there's a lot of strategies that we can implement that really only are going to focus on that radius. And for that radius, say if we're doing Google ads and we see people are typing in Thai food, Concord NH, and we see that uh, Chuck's example of a restaurant, you know, is not showing up there. So that's something that we could go into a Google advertising campaign. We could make sure that we're showing up for those really high value searches that are being done on Google, but we're only being shown to that 15 mile radius. Now, the big competitive advantage is that these large national companies, they're going to have a large national message in a lot of cases. And for us, we can have a very localized message in our ads that specifically talk to Concord, New Hampshire, that have these different local geo modifiers that, such as Concord, New Hampshire, right within that ad text that really talks about, you know, we're right downtown, um, we're, we're right here, we love serving the people of New Hampshire and Concord. And so I think that it's really comes down to that, like strategic messaging and showing people um, that, that you are, you know, right there in their backyard. Now, with that said, you know, we take a, I mean, we have clients that are both super localized. We have clients that are, uh, you know, statewide. We have companies clients that are regional, clients that are national. It's all kind of a different approach, but it's all kind of the same approach. It's just like where you're setting up your parameters in your advertising and who you want to tap into. And then it's about knowing that person better than these big national brands. Good point. Good point about the localization and the, and the, and the personal, you know, it's more personal too. Absolutely. Good question. So this is kind of a similar question. Um, but I, I've experienced this actually even, you know, today is a good example. Um, I didn't know that one of my favorite restaurants had reopened today until I actually walked by them. Um, even though I do follow them on social media on multiple different platforms. I think that right now um, businesses, are, their social media messages are getting lost because that is the main tool for communication right now. So I don't know if there is a solution to this, but do you guys have tips for you know, when it is time to start advertising that you have products available online, how do you make sure those don't just get lost? Yeah, I, I think that that's, uh, I mean, right now, if you look at uh, Facebook has reduced the organic reach of what a business page actually will get without doing some sort of advertising. Uh, and so when we talk about advertising, you know, we're not talking about as much of that boosting of a post. A lot of clients will have told us, you know, we tried Facebook advertising, we didn't really get any results. I'm like, okay, so what'd you guys do? They're like, well, we boosted a post. I'm like, okay, well, did people, did you boost it to get people to your website? Did you track that? Did you track 
how many people went to your site, how many people placed an order, like, and that usually there's a lot of gray areas and gray, you know, answers. And so that's what makes or breaks whether or not advertising is going to work for you. Now, with that said, you know, I think it's really important to get people to like your page. If you're a restaurant, you know, you can have at the tables, I've seen a lot of times a little, you know, pamphlet that says, hey, like us on Facebook. That's going to help get that organic reach out. But again, I mean, you can do paid stuff such as boosting a, if I'm a new restaurant that just opened up, I maybe would want to put a little boost or a, you know, a, an actual Facebook advertisement in front of the people that already like my page, just to get a little bit more um, control over that exposure that I have. Now, when we do Facebook advertising, we don't do boosts of posts. We go into the actual Facebook advertising platform, which you get to by business.facebook.com. And it is the actual login to the main advertising platform. So that is a entirely different animal than just boosting a post. But if I'm right now a local restaurant and I have a very, you know, small budget, then yeah, do a local, do a boost of your existing post and boost it to people that like your existing page. I wouldn't use it to um, try to generate a ton of new business as much as just get your message out efficiently and effectively to your existing, you know, kind of audience there. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a prime example of a consumer that responds to that on Facebook. Um, just a quick example, my local, um, it's called the Everyday Cafe here in Kentucook Village. It's a pretty popular place, um, but they use Facebook as well as anyone, and it's organic. And um, I, I don't believe I'm seeing boosted posts, although it's possible, but they're just very effective at getting their daily specials out. They take great pictures of them. They're very enticing looking. Uh, and they just post them and um, we, you know, I get that. And, and we've placed at least three dinner orders just because we got that Facebook notification and they were smoking the kind of meat that we wanted that night. So um, it works. It, it's a nice supplement, obviously. So that kind of leads to my next big question is, uh, Chuck, you touched on this uh, briefly, I know, but um, when it's time to, to list your products online, uh, we want to make sure that we're using great images that, like you said, entice people to buy our products. So um, do you have tips on getting people started with that? Like, you know, do, do you recommend that people hire a photographer or can you do some of this, um, you know, just yourself? Well, it, it depends, but nine times out of 10, I would say hire a professional um, you may have a, a wonderful lens on your, your camera. Um, most smartphones today are pretty good cameras, let's face it. Um, and you take shots um, that look amazing, you know, and you post them on Facebook. And so you, that makes you kind of think that, oh, I could be a professional photographer for my products as well. Um, or, or, you know, shoot a picture of my team and my facilities and make the place look great. Um, I suggest that you put the smartphone away and, and hire a photographer um, because they understand lighting um, better than I do and you do, in, unless you're a photographer, <laughs> okay? And they have equipment and they have lighting equipment and filters and special lenses. And so um, let's say you're, you're shooting uh, across a room and there's a window somewhere um, and no matter what angle you get, you just cannot get that that bright hot flash from the window uh you know from distorting the image of of your you know whatever you're shooting so an, an, a, a professional can do that they can take care of those issues and and the shot comes out beautiful um it's just kind of night and day and it's based mostly on my own experience having seen it both ways many times lots of do-it-yourself photography and lots of professional photography and the night and day difference just has me going back to the professional um, nine times out of 10, unless it's just something that's kind of an impromptu shot that might be good for posting to social media. Hey, fine, pull out your smartphone and, and have at it. But uh, when it comes to product, when it comes to facilities, when it comes to you know, really great portraits of your team, bring in the pros. I think that's a that's a great answer. Thank you for reaching out about that. Um, I just got a, a question in the Q and A portal about resources being available afterwards. Um, yes, we are recording this webinar um, 
and we will be sending additional resources, including that uh, you know great gift to get you started on e-commerce. So I have another uh, question, which maybe is diving into too big of a topic here, but um, I think many business owners are looking at selling physical products. Um, and do you have in you know some insight on how do you handle shipping? That seems like a really big, intimidating process. Is it really as hard as we think? Um, is it doable? Um, yeah, it's, well, how do you ship products now is how I would, I would ask, you know, are you, are you shipping, you know, in different types of quantities and do you already have somewhat of a system set up for that? Um, are you able to scale it out? But John, you know, he went through a number of very important logistical questions, having everything, you know, from everything from weight of one unit to multiple units to uh, sizes and, you know, dimensions. It all has to be thought through, um, you know, weight scales and, and what shippers you're going to use. Are you using the, the postal service, UPS, FedEx, common carrier? John, you want to you want to pick yeah. up on any of that? Yep. So just from a uh, like a little bit more uh, technical standpoint, is essentially when an order comes in, you'll receive a email saying an order came in. It'll show exactly what order, where it's going, everything. Now you know we can easily make so that a shipping label is also easily printed with that, so it can save you a step you know in that process. And so when you receive an order you get this email notification, you have this easily printed uh, you know, e uh, shipping label, and then it just really comes down to whatever uh, shipping company that you chose, that's gonna be of course like what we're using for everything, but it's very easy to then put that label on a box and send it out. And so when that happens, what's nice is we can sit in the back end of our WordPress, of our WooCommerce type site, and we can actually process different orders and mark that, okay, this order was processed and sent out. And we just click one button and it automatically says, okay, this one's all set. So what we re typically recommend is one person from the business is kind of the shop manager of the e-commerce store. And they're the ones that actually go in, look, and make sure that these orders are not just coming in, but they're actually being fulfilled. That you have, you know, some boxes that you have, you know, the shipping labels can be printed and quickly added on. Now there's a lot of really good automation out there. Um, there's automation that makes so that, I mean, you essentially get an email with the, uh, the actual order confirmation as well. You can set up so that there's a tracking link right within that because that same order confirmation, the customer's also getting. So you could eliminate a lot of that back and forth of customers being like, hey, when's my package coming in? You know, they're calling, they're, they're emailing, hey, when's my package coming in? You can eliminate that with different tactics, such as including that tracking link automatically right within that you know, order form. Now, what's nice is that different platforms such as stamps.com and USPS and UPS, they all have integrations that work seamlessly with WooCommerce. And so they actually directly connect with your site so that everything, all that heavy lifting is done. You're simply receiving the order, you're receiving that shipping label, and you just have to print that shipping label out and stick it on the package. Mm -hmm. All right, that sounds less intimidating it than I originally it, thought. It actually makes it easier if you, if you set it up right. Okay, that's encouraging, that's good to know. Um, so anything else that you guys wanna to touch on um, today before we wrap things up? Well, um, I'd like to thank you, Emily, and uh, the Chamber of Commerce, and all, especially all of you who are, have attended today. And I hope you can make good use of the special gift, and I am available by telephone. My website is chucksync.com if you need to reach me, find my contact information, and I would be delighted to answer any questions after this that I you know, can personally and uh, at least set you in the right direction. And I'm sure John would be happy to do that as well. And um, again, thank you so much. I'm, I'm so excited to have had this opportunity and uh, I look forward to um, you know, seeing all of you or as many of you as I can when we're able to uh, get back to physical networking and, um, and use the Chamber's resources for all they're worth like we're doing right now, but in person next time. <laughs> If we're so lucky, we'll see what happens. All awesome. right. 
Well, I want to share a little bit of info from the chamber. So I'm going to um, take over the screen for a sec. Um, I just want to let you know about a couple other things going on right now. Uh, we have applications open for our fantastic leadership program. This is a really unique uh, program that takes, um, you know, potential leaders through some amazing session days. It's a year long program. If you don't know about it, I would really recommend going to our website and taking a look at it. Um, also right now we're accepting applications for our annual Pinnacle Awards. Um, and these are, you know, this is a great way to honor businesses that are really stepping up right now. So we're really hoping that um, if you have a minute to support a fellow business that you'll take that time and nominate um, a business, small business, or a nonprofit, or business leader of the year that you think could use some recognition right now. Um, so that's, you know, basically it for me. I do want to uh, let you know about a couple webinars coming up on Tuesday. We will have a webinar um, in the morning at 10 a.m. with Oren Reno, PA, and they will be talking about um, strategies to reopen your business and uh, what, you know, legally you need to do in that situation. So take a look at that. We're also presenting a webinar on Thursday and that one's at 2 p.m. So a week from today. Um, and that will have uh, the city of Concord uh, Mayor Jim Boulay who will uh, give an update from the city. So I would definitely recommend signing up for that event as well. And that one um, is generously sponsored by Charter Trust Company. So we're very thankful for them for their support. Um, Chuck and John, I just want to thank you once again for your presentation today. It was really valuable. And I think this information is going to be very important for our business owners. So thank you for, for joining us today and um, coming on our webinar. Thank you, Emily. It was a pleasure. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.